So here's the thing. What is this perfection that God desires for us? Because we keep trying not to make mistakes, and I think there's this reality that he's desiring something much more important from us, but something that we have yet to see as important as he does. Have you noticed yet in your journey with Jesus, however short or long that it has been, that we tend to value things he doesn't value that much, and we tend not to value the things that he values at the actual top of his list? Have you noticed that most of the time when we call something perfect, what we're really saying is that it's what we wanted it to be? Right? It was the perfect day, the perfect treat, the perfect partner. All these things simply mean that whatever I'm describing is what I wanted it to be. Perfect for me might not be perfect for you, right? Right? You want to know how, how different we can be? Let's all sit down and decide how we eat our steak. Somebody will call it perfect when it's rare, and someone else will say, that is still alive. Someone else says, cook it till it's dead, and someone will say, you ruined it. Perfect for me. We've even come to the point where we use the word perfect sarcastically when something doesn't go our way. We get news or things don't go the way we hope, and we say, well, that's just perfect. What if being perfect isn't about being right And it's also not about not being wrong. What if being perfect is simply about being exactly what God desires us to be? Isn't that what Jesus was teaching in John chapter 9 when he said that the man that was born blind was born for the glory of God, that the glory of God would be seen through him? So doesn't that mean that the man in all of his years of blindness was perfect? Because he was exactly what God desired, that God had made this plan, that this is how Jesus would be glorified. So it's not just his healing that was perfect. He didn't become perfect in his healing. He was actually perfect in his blindness because it was going to bring glory to God. Wouldn't that mean that when Paul and Silas were in jail, they were in the perfect place, they were exactly where they were meant to be, that when they got arrested for a false reason, that it was all perfect because it was God's plan to save the Philippian jailer and to save all of his family? Doesn't that mean, and isn't that what Joseph tried to tell us in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, that he was perfectly placed in Egypt as a slave and then as a prisoner, all of it being unfair, all of it being unrighteous, all of it being false, but all of it being perfect because he was in the place where God would use him to save many. What if perfect isn't about us getting what we want or being what we thought we should be, and it's simply about being who God created us to be? And isn't every situation that leads to salvation perfect? Perfect. 